Um, so yeah, I'm Isaac, and I work at um, CKUT and Studio XX. Uh, CKUT is a campus community radio station, and uh, Studio XX is a uh, digital arts center. Um, now, before that, I was a web developer, but I do system administration for them. So I kind of do everything IT, or at least everything in my capacity at my current jobs. Um, and uh, it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, but I do have a lot of free tools that require relatively low maintenance, which is kind of the focus of this workshop. I have kind of an inventory of things I'd like to go over, and depending on people's needs, I can focus on one of those. I'm thinking specifically uh, for people who don't have websites or don't have their own domains and need easy ways of creating those facilities, such as having email, having a domain, having a website that handles multimedia, and having absolutely no budget and not having the option of increasing said budget. Um, because in a lot of cases, you know, spending a little bit more money does mean uh, less maintenance in the long term. And sometimes uh, I'm a huge supporter of free and open source software, but I recognize at the same time that um, in my own uh, workplaces, um, integrating some of those things just increases a dependence on people like myself. Um, so I am going to be talking about things like uh, Google Apps and uh, services that are hosted um, in the cloud, um, which uh, mean that we're kind of relying on uh, current state of the economy, meaning we, we have these amazing services that are av available for free. Um, and they're available for free by uh, giving up some of our privacy and some of our information for marketing purposes for these companies. Um, I'd say it's worth it to ride this out now, especially if you do have no budget, um, because some of these things are amazing. Specifically, who has heard or used Google Apps? Not Google Mail, but yeah. Who in the room? Just put up your hands so that I know. Um, could you quickly say which part of Google Apps that you use? Um, Starting. Yeah. Are Google Docs Google Apps? Yeah, Google Docs. Yeah. <laughs> I use Google Docs, and um, yeah, I feel like there's maybe some others, but I feel like that's the one that I'm most convinced by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Anyone else just want to quickly uh, say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Docs, uh, the calendar, the the, ch the Gmail, all together. Yeah. Um, was anyone aware that you can host email on your own domain using Google Apps? Yeah. No. No. Okay, so for the people who don't know this, uh, I would say that for an organization with no budget or a very small budget, there's really no point in using uh, other email providers right now than Google Apps because it's free. And um, for example, if I go to my own email account, which is at typeleft.com, it gives me an interface that I'm sure most people are familiar with, which is Gmail. Um, Google has a service that allows you to host your own domain on top of Gmail. And it gives you an interface to add and remove um, accounts. Uh, you can add up to 50, and the restrictions are relatively few. Um, you could add 50 uh, domain name or... Email? Up to 50 accounts, but you can create as many domains as you want to. Okay. You just create different Google accounts for each domain. So 50 accounts that would have the same, that would be type left? That would be something, something... Added. Yeah, exactly. You, would, you can add separate mail accounts at your domain. You can have an account for every single person. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, the hassle of administrating your own mail server, or if you use a mail server attached to your web host, um, there are a lot of advantages to using Google Apps instead of those solutions. Um, their spam filtering is a lot better. Uh, for anyone who has problems with, you know, just handling loads of spam every day, spam, spam, spam filtering has become such a complicated business these days that it's very hard to do it well. Um, for example, I administer mail servers at CKUT and StudioXX, and it takes a lot of my time doing that. And 
using Google Apps would make it a lot easier. So I kind of want to move forward because there's not too much time. And I should probably uh, move to websites because that's another common. Um, because, OK, in the other workshop right now, they're focusing on web development. But I've, I'm guessing that the people who have showed up there have a budget for web, de web development. So I'm going to talk about the same tools right now, i.e. Drupal and WordPress. But I'm going to focus on. Um, the free uh, cloud hosted solutions has who has used or heard of what WordPress.com provides? Not the actual WordPress software, but WordPress.com. I don't know what upstairs just now. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> WordPress.com is run by the same people who uh, created WordPress. WordPress is uh, an open source website blogging platform. And it's generally the option you use if you have a less of a budget instead of Drupal. I don't know if they're going to say that in the Drupal versus WordPress <laughs> workshop, but that's my opinion. And I've used Drupal way more than I've used WordPress. And I'm recommending WordPress. Um, so at WordPress.com, um, you can essentially just sign up and create a new website for free um, based on WordPress. You don't know how to, you don't need to know how to use WordPress. You just um, sign up now. And uh, you can um, spend some time playing around yourself, trying to customize it. But really, this is, this is the quickest way to start. Um, a slightly dynamic website that's easy to update. It's one of the easiest right now. Um, the next one I'm going to show you is called Drupal Gardens. And this is a relatively new one. But if you, I mean, another thing I would recommend is if you do know geeks, um, say if you know a Drupal geek and they're willing to volunteer some time and you don't know any WordPress geeks, uh, even though maybe Drupal is slightly more difficult, maybe it's worth using Drupal and using something like Drupal Gardens because you can get a little bit further with it. WordPress.com is not WordPress, and Drupal Gardens is not Drupal. The, these are like free hosts as opposed to the software that you can take and use yourself. It's important to make that distinction just so people don't get confused. You know? I know that um, campaigning is also a huge issue, uh, sending out newsletters. Does anyone in the room currently send out newsletters? Um, so uh, can you just quickly just tell me which software you use? Because I'm curious. I've only done it once because I'm in my position. And yeah. right now we're using your mailing list provider, which is just like an online newsletter. You track your database of people that sent to and then they track who opens and clicks through. Uh -huh. But it's really, really easy. Okay, cool. We just have an email account called newsletter. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's just a big alias. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We use constant contact. Constant contact, right, I've heard about that one. Is that, who, who maintains that one? Constant contact. <laughs> okay. I, that's, it's huge. It's, uh, it's in the States. Um, one great thing I tell you is their support is phenomenal, mm -hmm. and their database, their FAQ section, knowledge database, and, things and you so pay for that pay one. For it, yeah. yeah, but it's uh, the, the rate changes depending on how many uh, email addresses you're mailing to, and the mm -hmm. basic fee is uh, I think it's, 50, it's either fifteen or twenty dollars a month. Okay, but it does what Henry uh, um, was mentioning: tracking click-throughs and all that. Right. I've set up open source solutions for CKUT uh, and other organizations um, using software called PHP List. And I would recommend PHP List if you have a nerd who's enthusiastic about installing it. Because actually, it's, it's one solution where 
you install it and it actually, for the most part, just works. Um, I've installed it for some organizations four or five years ago and they've never had to contact me about fixing anything. So, yeah, relatively little investment and then it just works. It's also free. Once you've installed it, I mean, it has to be hosted somewhere, but if you already have a web host, If you don't have a web host and you don't use email marketing or if you're looking for a new one, this is something that a lot of uh, friends are talking about. And I just checked them out before this workshop. Um, it's called MailChimp. And um, I think it offers features similar to um, Constant Contact. It's a web-based one. It allows you to use um, templates for your newsletters. And um, it uh, allows you to send um, up to 12,000 emails per month for free wow. with up to 2,000 subscribers. And then if you need to go beyond that, uh, then you can pay for it, um, in which case I think it's similar to the prices from Constant Contact. Mm -hmm. but. but the best way to actually send a file through email is not to attach it if you're sending it to hundreds or thousands of people. The best way to, attach, to send out a file is to use, to put it on the web somewhere. If you already have a website, that's great and then put a link to it, mm -hmm. because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go up faster, yeah. because the actual email will be much lighter, it just contains a link, right. and, um, and you're not going to be paying um, a newsletter company to host it for you. Something else I just wanted to mention, a relatively new company that I think is going to revolutionize the way people use files, um, is called Dropbox. Um, I don't know if you can send out links to Dropbox files. I know you can share them, but I don't know if you can embed them in emails, whether they'd get mad at you for that. Other providers that might not are, say, Mediafire um, or RapidShare. So um, this is where you would keep your files? Yeah, what I'm, I'm going to switch topics just because okay. this workshop's almost over, and I kind of wanted to mention this before it finishes. This is something I would... I, I don't think that there is especially if you're at an internet connection a lot of the time it's a really easy way to take your files on the go and um, it's one of the most popular iPhone and iPad applications right now so I think that this company has kind of become the de facto cloud file storage um, they've made it it's kind of a replacement for your USB key it's it's not intended necessarily for really large files, but for office work, this is incredibly useful because if you're working on a document at work and you're saving it in the Dropbox folder, when you get home, you can get that file off of the Dropbox website. You can go and log in and grab it. Or if you have a computer at home that's hooked up to Dropbox, it'll just be there on your desktop. Yeah, you're saving yourself carrying around files, making sure that they're in the right places, you're also saving yourself from backup to a certain extent mm. because, um, all right, well, the, it's kind of a catch-22. Like, you're hosting your files in, on an incredibly large and expensive to maintain infrastructure. And, I mean, by that, who knows if this is going to be free. It's the same kind of discussion as Google Apps. Who knows if this is going to be free in four or five years. But for now, I'd say let's just take advantage of it. Um, but the files are stored in, they guarantee redundancy, which means your file is probably going to be stored several times, like three or four times on different servers. The reliability of things like Google Apps and using Dropbox versus storing files on your own computer or even your own web server is much, much higher. Generally, these things don't go down. They're not going to break. Um, they kind of manage that for you. Can you share your Dropbox with other people? Yeah. Okay.